Hi, welcome back to the Meltran Designs podcast. I'm your host, Melissa, also known as Anansi on Ravelry, and on Instagram, I am Meltran Designs. You can also find a Meltran Designs Facebook page where I will post when a new um, episode is up or if I release a pattern. And also there's a Ravelry group under Meltran Designs that um, is for the same reasons or um, if there's anything else going on that's more of the chatter side if there's ever if there's ever chatter <laughs> so anyways today is Friday September 8th 2017 we're sitting outside again as you can see it's not very late there's an airplane or no it's a helicopter flying over excuse me oh my cat's gonna she's been sitting up on the table here hopefully that didn't shake too much um anyway it's not very bright outside because it's still pretty early. It's not um, not even 8 o'clock. I actually don't even know what time it is. 7 something? 7.45 maybe? <laughs> Anyways, um, let's see. Oh, nope, I lied. It's 8.06. I guess it took me a little longer to uh, get this going than I thought. Um, it's also pretty cloudy. Um, it's been just a haze of smoke and smoke and smoke for days and days and days because there are fires burning all over the northwest so um we had a little bit of a little bit of kind of moisture come through last night you know kind of a sprinkling and a little bit of some wind that seems to have cleared it up a little people with asthma and whatnot have been just getting sick and oh it's been terrible and like the sun in the middle of the day you can just look at it because it's just kind of this neon pink color. I mean, it's been cool looking, but kind of weird. So anyways, it's because we live in this valley here. Um, and so, you know, any smoke just comes in. We also have something called inversions in the winter um, where if it stays cloudy and then people are burning their, you know, their wood burning stoves and their pellet stoves and whatnot, and those create smoke, um, then it like holds it in and anyway it's all right I would rather have that than hurricanes and earthquakes and tornadoes and ice storms and <laughs> a lot of other things that happen in other places that don't happen here so anyway happenings this week well that happened but uh, I finally got the rest of my carpet put in Yay! Monday morning they came and finished putting the carpet in and put the transition strip in. The guy that came to do it was actually like the head subcontractor um, of all of them and he was less than impressed, let's just say, that, that the guys who were here before didn't put a transition strip in. So um, from my living room to my dining room. So anyway, he um, did that for me and got, got all the carpet put in and um, we started moving our stuff back in again but for real this time so like our dresser is no longer in the dining room it's in our room which is nice and our clothes are in there and um, makeshift nightstands until I build a couple and my yarn is in totes along one wall totes and like big um, I have a couple of big like weekend bags you know like the nice canvas weekend bags um, from 31 bags and anyway so my yarn is in there um, until I build the shelving unit that I'm gonna put in <laughs> lots of things to build um, yeah I need to clean off all my tools on the back patio and and get it all organized so that way uh, excuse me that way I can um, yeah get it get those things built and we can really get settled we did move the desk in there I'm not there's not really anywhere else to put it but I don't love it right there at the same time I don't know I'm gonna try and figure something out I need to have the desk in there because it's my desk and I finally have taken it back from Jake <laughs> so I just don't know if where it is is good, but because our clothes are on clothing racks instead of in a closet that doesn't exist in there, I can just move that stuff around. So I might, I might do some resituating. We'll see. 
Um, another thing I've been doing is canning pears. Yesterday um, I did 16 quarts and 16 pints. Um, about 50 pounds of pears, a little bit under, maybe 48 pounds of pears. So, um, yay. Today I'm doing the other half of them, so 48 to 50 pounds. I'm going to be doing pear sauce, so you know, like applesauce, but pears, and um, dehydrating a lot of them. So I might do like half and half, I haven't decided yet. Once I get in there and get going, I'll just see how I, how I feel about it. Um, What's really cool is I was out of um, I was out of jars except for some half pint jars, but I only like those for jams. I don't like those for anything um, that you use in more you know larger quantities and like applesauce things like that. You'll get like you know a few scoops of, and so a half pint jar is essentially like two servings, you know, pretty much. So, anyways, I do like the pint jars and. Um, I was, so when the women's group at my church is called the Relief Society, and so the Relief Society president is the one who is kind of running this canning thing. She's teaching a lot of us who, um, like, obviously my mom isn't around. Um, if, if you've watched this for any amount of time, you know that she passed away um, quite a long time ago now. And... Um, Anyway, and she never was into canning or anything anyway, and my grandma, who um, was still alive, who canned, she passed away unexpectedly last summer. And so, um, I, I mean, I can find stuff online, don't get me wrong, I know how to look stuff up, but it's nice to have that person there who's done it before, who can just kind of show you how to do it instead of going, okay, step one, okay, okay, step two, and by then, like, you know, they'll show you, okay, do this and this and this kind of all at the same time. You know, they, they show you kind of the flow of things instead of, you know, breaking it up and stuff like that. So anyway, it's been, it's been really nice to be working with her and she has, um, a propane burner out on her back porch where she has, you know, those big, the big canning, um, pots and, and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely don't have stuff like that. So anyways, it, it was a lot of fun hanging out with her yesterday. And what's funny is I actually work with her grandson out of all the randomness, um, of things <laughs> at Panera. So anyway, did that and yeah, I'll be doing the other ones today. I started to tell you that, sorry, circle, circling back around. I was out of jars. You guys got to keep me reined in here. I was out of jars and she said, go to DI, which I know not everyone has a DI, Deseret Industries. It's, you know, like a Goodwill type place. It's a secondhand store. Um, and she said they always have lots of jars. And she, and she said, but if they have pint jars, I always nab them because they don't ever have them. I said, okay, what size do they usually have? Um, cause I was expecting her to say maybe like the half pint jars, you know, the small ones. And she said, well, they always just have quart jars. And I was like, all right. So I go pick the kids up from school, head over there. They had th three quart jars and 19 pint sized jars. So since they were only a quarter a piece, I bought them all. And the quart jars were only 50 cents a piece. So for $6.63, I got 22 jars. And I know that sounds like a lot, but the pint jars fill up pretty fast. And um, after I get done with the pears and whatnot, I would like to have extras because we're going into now, you know, with it being September, it's apple season. And um, I've never canned apple pie filling before. Um, in my life, I've never really been a fan of baked apples in any form, but I realized that a lot of the times that you have apple pie, it's Granny Smith apples. I hate Granny Smith apples. <laughs> I hate them, I hate them. So I decided to make an apple pie a couple years ago with some, what were they? Gala, I think, that we had picked from a local orchard. And that was fantastic. I think it was a mixture of the type of apples plus um, the recipe that I had was, was really good too. It was a little different than other ones that I've had. So anyways, I think it's the type of apples that are baked that I haven't been enjoying. So um, remember last week when I was talking about that I'd gone out to the church orchard, maybe it was two weeks ago, 
well um, they also have apples out there and so I'm gonna jump on their Facebook page and see if they have any available and if they do um, I think I'll go out and get some of those and do some um, apple pie filling with however many you know jars I have left over and um, I can also give those away like for Christmas I can give them to people and you know stuff like that so it's just kind of one of those things and you can also make apple crisp with it I'm I, because I can see my reflection because of the light out here I, I see that I'm doing this a lot <laughs> anyway um, now you guys are gonna notice every time I randomly go like this I talk with my hands a lot but if I talk with my hands at the computer I have to have them up at an awkward angle and anyway it's killing me so randomness today. We could do apple crisp as well, and I, I do like apple crisp better than pie. Maybe they'll all be apple crisp <laughs> and no pie, but anyway, there's my plan for the rest of the jars. I'll have to find a place to keep them. Oh, I'll tell you that too. Um, an upcoming woodworking project that I'm also going to make, I can't remember if I mess mentioned it last week. My sisters and I have been talking about it. My one sister found a mm, plan I just about said recipe, stopped myself. My brain went to pattern. In woodworking, it's a plan. <laughs> she found, actually I should just say an online tutorial for um, a rollout shelf that fits, it's supposed to fit in narrow places. This woman that, that did it, it went between her refrigerator and the wall. She had a, like four inches of space and so she made this little rollout um, shelf that can just hold some cans or whatever and um, my sister has a space like that next to her fridge well between our pantry and the new wall that we built we actually have about eight inches six to eight inches I haven't measured but I think it's like seven to eight so I'm gonna make mine a little bit wider and um, what I decided to do because with it being so tall and narrow something that she did mention is that if you pull it out all the way it can tip over you know especially at only four inches wide so um, what I'm gonna do is like I said make it wider which will be awesome she also used dowels and like set them in you know to hold stuff in you lose so much space using dowels plus who wants to put holes and put them no I am not gonna mess with that I was reading in the comments and someone else took you know the thin um, like edging strips that you can get and just put a slat on the front of it you know kind of like your um, refrigerator door how, it, how it'll have kind of that bar across it so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna make it narrow enough to allow for the slat that I'm gonna put on it to hold the stuff in and I'm gonna make it let me see about six and a half feet tall I was trying to remember when I put my arm up how tall it was um, you know with the shelves what's nice about it being able to be wider is it's not just gonna be for small cans it can be for bigger cans it can be for boxes of cereal or you know whatever overflow from the pantry however I decide to situate things but I'm thinking it's gonna have the kids as snacks you know like genius so to circle back around circling back around to the fact that hers could fall over. One, mine will be wider, so it shouldn't um, it shouldn't fall over as easy, but I also had this stroke of genius where the one solid side that will be up against the wall, I'm gonna make it taller than, you know, obviously I wouldn't put a shelf up at the top, but I'm not gonna frame it right there. What I'm gonna do is have there be the top shelf and then have it extend up and I'm gonna get a second bar door, barn door, not bar door, <laughs> barn door track. And put it on the wall right there and put it on the top like I'm going to do the door on the other side of that wall. So that way it's on that track and it's also on wheels. So not only will it make it so it can't fall over, um, my thinking is that it'll also make it easier to pull because if it gets heavy and it's just on those wheels, you know it's it's gonna be kind of awkward to pull out and so it'll give it that guide to just pull it along um, yeah and I'm gonna use you know like the drawer pulls just that kind of are shaped like that um, I'll just put one right on there and we'll be able to pull it out and push it back in <sighs> anyway I'm super excited about that one 
I'm gonna make our nightstands and my shelving unit first. I say that, but we both have makeshift nightstands right now and my yarn is in <laughs> totes. Our food on the other hand, it, that's in our pantry. And when I say pantry, just so you know, we, I think, I, I, th I do think I talked about this when I was talking about the carpet fiasco a few weeks ago. We extended our kitchen, you know, to make the dining room in, to, into half of what was the single car garage. Um, and we put in a counter on one of the walls with um, cabinets and cupboards. And then because we had no food space, um, I really, I wonder how people packed their food into this kitchen when it was the way it was when we moved in. I really don't know where they put their food. Like we didn't, we only lived here like a year. And I remember where we put all of our food because we didn't have very much money. I mean, we don't have a ton now, but we like really didn't have any money. So we didn't have a lot of food in the house. So anyway, I decided, I was like, okay, I need a pantry of some sort. And so when we were at Lowe's, I got um, like a, a cabinet essentially that has, um, the the bottom of it you know is the first shelf and then it has two shelves in it and then it so that's the bottom of the pantry and then the top you know has another door that's kind of smaller um anyway that's where we keep our food and it's good the only problem is that the shelves are really tall which i know i could i could you know put another piece of wood in and figure that out but um it, it would be nice to have kind of that overflow set of shelves for just that extra random stuff, you know what I mean? And like when I buy 25 pound bags of sugar, I put it into um, one and two gallon Ziploc bags. Um, and I do that with the flour as well. You, well, the flour I put into the big two and a half gallon Ziploc bags, We, I found them at Winco. They're about the best thing ever. They're ginormous. I could like put, you know, down to here <laughs> into it if I wanted to, like they're huge. Anyway, I put them in there and they're the hefty brand so they have the zipper because then we don't get the little weevils that like to get into the flour sometimes. So anyways, plus it makes it so if I need to refill my canisters or whatever, I can just pull that out instead of trying to dig in the 50 pound bag of flour. So anyways, I'm thinking if those go in the bottom shelf of that pullout, because there's just bags of stuff. Anyways, I don't need to go into that. There's my pantry, that's what I'm thinking, sorry. We'll see what order I do stuff. I need to clean the back first, but very, very first I need to do the pears because they're starting to, I mean, they're ripe. They really have to be processed today. So um, I'm gonna start those when I'm done here. Um, that's a lie. I think I'm actually going to clean a little bit because Eli has a presentation at 9.30 at the school, so. Um, I think I'll do some housework before I do that and then get to work on the pairs. So you came for knitting. <sighs> There's all that for the week. Um, I did also want to say moving on into going on slash coming up. <sighs> Retreat signups are coming very soon. So like I said, today is the ninth. What is that? What does that put? Eighth. Today's the eighth, not the ninth. Today's the eighth. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Next Friday. That's okay. I do remember that I set it up for being a Friday. Next Friday, retreat registration starts. Um, I don't know what time I'll open it. I'll probably just, when I get up with the kids, I'll activate it. So um, it'll be about seven my time. So nine o'clock Eastern, 9 a.m. Eastern. 8 Central, 7 Mountain, 6 Pacific, whatever time zone you're in. I think most of the people who are coming are in my time zone anyway. And um, yeah, but consider coming. Think about it. It'll be fun. If you have any questions, you can PM me on Ravelry. Um, the fastest way to get a response is going to be to email me at fiberfanaticsunite at gmail.com. So anyways, that's the only thing really that's coming up right now. Um, so let's get on to the knitting. Yay! I don't have any finished objects this week because I've really been focusing on just the one, but I do have a couple other things I've worked on here and there. I did sit down and um, weave in the ends on the shirt that I finished last 
week, but I haven't soaked it yet. Um, and there was one other thing that I finally soaked. Um, I'm trying to remember if I ever even showed it on the podcast. I made this crocheted vest that um, it's a long, it, it's a little bit longer in the front and shorter in the, in the back. It has like, you know, like the, you know, the, the long front panels. Um, that I made out of a really pretty teal green. I finally soaked that and wore it yesterday and I think it's in the van. Um, and the van isn't very far away, but I'm not I'm not gonna get it. If I happen to be wearing it when I record, I'll just show it to you guys. I don't even think there's a project page on Ravelry. <laughs> um, anyways, if I think of it next week, I'll grab it and show it to you. But anyways, I was so glad to have that soaked and be able to wear it because um, it's a fun color and anyways, so. Um, yeah, so I have, and I haven't soaked that shirt, um, but I did weave in the ends, and I weaved in the ends. <laughs> I refound a shawl that I made last year when I was in Kentucky. It was the Joy Alloy shawl that I made from last year's ZK. It's never been blocked. It was in the bottom of the bag that I emptied out this week that had just random knitting stuff in it. Um... And I still haven't, I still haven't blocked it, but there was a lot, because you use seven different colors. And so I did weave in all the ends from when I, you know, started and stopped using those. So it is ready to be blocked. I just haven't blocked it. So there was some other random, you know, knitting-ish things going on. So um, first things first, I'll pull this out because it's on the top. I don't know if I showed this to you guys. Um, this is one of my go-to patterns that I absolutely love. It hasn't been soaked yet. It's crocheted. Um, I need to write it up as a free pattern because I, I love doing it. Um, this is 45 or 50 stitches, I don't remember, um, on I think a G hook. This is some fingering weight. Um, and so I started it with half the number of stitches and then I doubled them in in the that first row and I do three rows of single crochet and then a row of like a triple and then three rows of single and a triple so that I like to do that in knitting too where I'll do three garter rows and then do um a fourth row of a double wrap dropping it so it has that drop stitch look so that's essentially what this is and I made one of these before that was essentially just a cowl but I wanted to have wanted to have it be bunchy here because let me show you how there's a couple ways I intend to wear it one way is you know it can just be a cowl and you can't tell that it's bunchy and I can just have it on it is long enough that I can put it doubled if I if I really um, need to be warm it's also tall enough you know that in the winter I can put it up over my ears when I run to the store and then pull it down but what I really intended on doing was being able to pull it over my shoulders and have it be nice and snug and the other one I can too but you'll see why You'll see why I put the little, let's see. So you see it kind of gives it that decorative and I can put it in the middle. You know, I kind of had it pictured in the center, but you know, you can put it off to the side and just, just kind of give your shoulders some covering, um, you know, kind of like a shrug that's attached essentially. Um, so the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm making another one. This is something I just, if I'm kind of tired and just don't feel like knitting but want to do something, I'll pick this up. This is just kind of my different brain space. And I mean, I usually feel like knitting, don't get me wrong, because knitting is super easy. It just, every once in a while, I'm just like, I don't feel like knitting, but I want to do something. This is that go-to. It's usually, I'm sitting on my bed, just like, Ugh, I want to do something. So I had two skeins of this beautiful light blue um, tonal that my friend Priscilla gave me. And let's see if I can find a spot where you can see it a little bit more. I, my cake needs to be fixed, but um, I don't know if you can see where there's kind of the darker 
um, the darker speck right here and right along here. Like she, she kind of very gently speckled it with itself. Um, let me see. Yeah, you can't. Oh, Belle, be quiet. The neighbor across the street's outside, heaven forbid. Anyway, you can kind of see on there the darker speckles of it. It, it was essentially, you know, just um, dye that, that uh, the powder that just kind of sat there instead of being mixed around in the water because she does kettle dye, dyeing. So anyway, what I wanted to do with this one was I cast on twice as many stitches. Still started it the same with doing half. So yeah, I think this one has 90. Maybe I didn't do quite double, but anyways, you can see like the darker and lighter. I love, I love how um, the difference in knitting and crochet as far as, especially if you're doing like a double or like this really big triple stitch here, um, it like it really shows up in the longer stitches because you're using that whole blip of the darker color in that one stitch instead of spreading it out over a few and it being this way it it you know goes up like that so anyways this is all I have like I said I'll sit down and do you know a, a set of those four rows um, here and there and I do like so you see how there's these long stitches and then the row right after them, that single crochet row that I do, um, has almost like an eyelet look to it. And then you have the, the other rows that kind of close in there. So anyway, the reason I wanted to do it is because, see how much longer it'll be on me? And I'm not doing any shaping. I probably could, if I really wanted to go nuts, I could, you know, figure out doing some sort of like short row stuff and whatnot. I, I don't care about that because um, I can just, whatever is extra here, I can just kind of fold, you know, forward like that. But it'll really be tall enough to, to be able to pull up, you know, onto my, um, onto my head as kind of a hood. I love using stuff like this when I go out in the winter. See, that's gonna be nice and tall. Um, I love using stuff like this for a hood instead of like my hoodie hood because it um, it just kind of sits on my head and so if my hair is fixed or if I um, oh hi kitty um, if I just don't want something so um, so snug on my head I can just pull this up and then the nice thing is too when I get to the store I can just pull it down and then I have a cute little cowl on and it looks like I'm all put together and stuff Anyway, here's the hook that I'm using is a G. Yep, it is a G. And this is my favorite, favorite, favorite crochet hook. This is from Laurel Hill and it's ebony. I got it at Sock Summit in 2011 and I just, I really just absolutely love it. I know I've talked about it on the podcast before, but every time I use it, I just, oh, anyway. And I, ha I have other hooks and whatnot, but if I can use this one, I do. So anyways, and this is just some fingering weight yarn like I said she um, my friend Priscilla is Madsen originals on um, Etsy M-A-D-S-E-N Madsen originals and this is actually one of her bags that she makes do you remember this these cute cube bags that she that she does I love them so 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 very much and um, it only holds that one um, that one ball though one cake and so I have this one this is um stunning string stunning stunning string studios I think is what this is called anyway I got it last year because I love me some flip-flops so anyway I have the other skein there's um there's a pocket on the inside and so I just kind of hold it hold it in there so anyway what I like about when you order bags from them is you get to pick the drawstring color that goes with it which is which is fun makes it you know a little more personal you pick the size and then the drawstring and so anyway I do really like it and I like that it has the satin on the inside because then um, my stuff doesn't stick in there stick you know stick to the sides all right next is the shirt that I've been making for my little Quinny oh my gosh you guys she started preschool this week 
I, none of my kids have gone to preschool because we've never had the hundred dollars a month to spend on sending them. And, um, on top of that, they, um, it just I was fine not sending them like I didn't feel the pressure or need or anything like that but one of the gals um, at church started this co-op so there's four moms and you know four kids and so eat and we do it Tuesdays and Thursdays and each week of the month one of us takes turns teaching and um, teaching preschool is not my idea of fun let's just uh, leave it at that or else I'm gonna sound like a horrible human being but Quinn has quite a bit of social anxiety and I knew that she could really use it. Um, and so her well-being <laughs> and her social development was more important than my not wanting to do it. And it's two hours twice a week, so, or t two hours, two days out of the, you know, out of the week. And anyway, so um, she did go yesterday. She had a bit of a meltdown leading up to going and when we got there but um, after me sitting sitting with her for about 10 minutes I was able to to leave and a friend of mine <clears throat> stayed there with her son and to help the gal with the gal who was teaching because she has um, a ba a newborn baby well a baby that's like three months old um, so she stayed to help with her if she needed anything so um, yeah anyway <laughs> So I texted her and I said, if she has a meltdown, let me know and I'll come back because they don't, they don't live very far away. So anyway, she said, nope, she's doing great. And then about an hour later, I said, is everything still good? I'm not one of those paranoid parents. Quinn just, she really struggles. And I didn't want her to feel like she was just being left there because then it would lead to her not ever going back. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? So about an hour later, I was like, hey, is everything going good? And she's like, yeah, she's doing great. She sent me a picture of Quinn sitting up eating her snacks up at the table. I mean, she was totally fine. It was just kind of that beginning anxiety. So anyway, um, I, I know I forgot to tell you. Here is the picture of her yesterday leaving for preschool. Is that just the cutest thing ever or what? I mean, seriously. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to sit still, but there you go. Anyway, just the cutest thing ever. All right. So... I've been working on her shirt like crazy. I think I'm going to put it on some waist yarn and put it on her because um, I know it's not quite as long as I want it, but I think I, I think I can be done doing the increases so much. Um, I've been doing them every fourth row, and I think I'm going to do them like every eighth row just to keep them going but slow them down. Sorry, I'm getting it situated. So here it is. This is actually what I worked on when I was walking the kids to the bus stop today and then back home. Um, I took this instead of my sock, but anyway, there it is. You can see, let's see if I can get it to pull out here. You can see where the increases are. They actually look really good like that. I know it's not, it's not looking great because the needles are <laughs> pointing down. Let's see if I can show you on the back here. Not, not so much better because that points down too. Yeah, you can see that a little bit better. So, But it doesn't mess with the stripes. That's what I like about doing my own stripes is it doesn't mess with the self-striping as far as, um, um, you know, making it thinner or whatever. But I did just now notice that here for a little bit, it was one single color per stripe until, because um, up here, you know, the stripes were small, uh, the rounds were less stitches and so we'd get the mix of colors but apparently this is just the right amount of stitches <laughs> that they made it all the way around and then now the colors aren't making it all the way around and they're mixing up again so anyway um, I have two different place markers so I'll hold it upside down this is the marker that I put in last week when I recorded so I've done all this and then this marker is from, I held it up to her and said, okay, how much longer do I need? And I figured out that I wanted 15 more of the purple stripes um, after this one. So that's my counting one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm on my seventh one after that. But like I said, I wanna see if it has belled out 
enough because I don't want it to go like crazy out. Um, so anyways, I'm going to move this progress marker right now while I'm talking about it. So that way we can see next week where I was. And there we go. This is out of some Knit Picks yarn. The self-striping is the Felici. And the solid is their Stroll Brights that they, I don't know, they had them and then didn't have them. And um, it's, I think it's one of their kind of rotating ones. Um, so I, I'm down to about this much of each. I do have a second ball of both of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I will be busting into that soon. It's in my heart bag. Um, lastly, for projects I've worked on is my my little BSU sock. This lives in my purse. And uh, yesterday and today I worked on the shirt when I walked the kids to the bus stop. Um, and I don't think I... Oh, Jake took them to school Wednesday, so I didn't walk them to... Oh, Tuesday. My alarm has been all screwy on this phone, and... Um, I woke up at the time they were supposed to be walking out the door. No, I woke up after that. Last week was when I woke up when they were supposed to be walking out the door. This one, I woke up a little bit later than that, and I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to mess with it because Jake wasn't at work. Stinking flies. Jake was home, and so I was like, I'll just get the kids up. I'll drive them to school, and I went for a walk afterwards. And so I did work on this while I was doing a walk around um, Wilson Pond. It's a one-mile loop. So anyway, I didn't get a ton done on it. You can see here. Um, I need to measure it. I haven't measured it yet. I just keep pulling it out and working on it. These are going to be knee highs before too long. Um, I, I still am not convinced on the um, nine inch circulars. I, I like that I can just keep going and my fingers are, are getting a feel for it. Um, what I don't like is for Magic Loop, I can load it up on there and just and you know just push it up a couple of times. With this, I'm constantly having to push it, and so I don't know that it's going any faster or even as fast. I'm not really sure, um, but I don't hate it. I mean, I know some people get it and they do a couple inches and they're like, "Oh, I hate it. I'm done." And I didn't love it at the beginning, but I was like, "I'm going to do a whole pair of socks." I'm gonna give it its fair, like I'm, I'm, I've committed to a full pair of socks. And anyway, so just holding it up to my foot. Let's see, the heel would go in about roughly here is where I will um, start the heel, start the heel. So. And usually I do this again up here. So yeah, I still have I still have a few months worth of working on this with doing it as little as I do. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, it does make my fingers cramp still a little because I'm changing how I hold it. So uh, you know, working on it for 20 minutes here and there is fine. I'm not in any hurry. I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't mind having them done because it's football season, but where we live, it's always BSU season. So I can wear them whenever and they're going to be awesome <laughs> and appreciated. And that's in my Japanese knot bag. The only other thing I have to show you today is I did pull out my little Turkish here because I re-found it. Yay! I had found it and then I put a bunch of stuff away and then found it again. So um, I did pull it out and work on the second half of a um, pigtail from Greenwood. <clears throat> she makes these cute little quarter, or well, no, this is not quarter. Um, it's a ha about a half an ounce. So what I do is I split it in half, um, spin both halves, and then pl <clears throat> ply them together. Excuse me. So I do have the first half turtle done here. Oh, I have, this is cherry cola. 
this colorway. And that's very aptly named because you have the cola colors and you have the cherry in there. And this one is BFL. I only get BFL or Polworth from her in the pigtails because I hate spinning merino anyways and I'm not going to do it on my drop spindle unless it's a blend. So as you can see, um, well I've done half of the half because I split it in two for some reason. I'm not really sure why. So um, I'm doing the, the last quarter <laughs> of the little pigtail. So anyways, it's fun. I love this little mini Turkish. It's from Subterranean Woodworks or Subterranean. Yeah, I got it. Um, I got it when Lisa and I were at Maryland Sheep and Wool a few years ago now. And um, that was like, there were two things that I was like, I want to go to the Briar Rose booth and I want a mini Turkish. <laughs> and those were the first two places that we went. It, Briar Rose was on our way uh, was you know kind of towards the front and then we went to um, I think it was I think it's Nitty in color is it her husband that does this I think so anyways her booth like that was where we went and poof they had these little mini Turkish so I was like I'm good everything now is just a bonus <laughs> and I did proceed to spend quite a bit of money after that but anyways I digress there's this and I do, I usually keep my other, my top whirl spindle in here. I'm not really sure where that is. It must be in another pack, um, another bag. But I also keep my Nasta pin that matches that top whirl. This is some uh, tulip wood. It has this beautiful orangey pink. I love this. This is by um, Green Sleeves. So, anyways, that is all I have to show you today. Just a reminder, I do have retreat brochures. If you would like me to um, mail you one just for yourself or I can email it to you or if you wanna have some to hand out to your knitting group. Um, and I have a few more of the eight and a half by 11 kind of posters that I put together so yarn stores could like put it in a window or you know, just display it somehow. Or anyways, if you want, um, if you want some of those, Lucy, hush. Lucy, Lucy, if you want some of those, let me know. So anyways, I, she's going to start barking at my neighbor. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, so until next time, keep knitting. Bye.